Hey. My name is Caden. My name is Jaden. My name is Eli. I'm Jason. And we are the Yahoo and the Tour YouTube channel. We are so glad you are joining us. We know that your time is very valuable, and so we appreciate your time. We appreciate you guys sitting around our little digital family that we have here, and we'll give you guys a big old big grizzly bear hug. Rawr! All right, that's it. So now you have your grizzly bear hug, and you have all of us, and we're hanging out with you, and we are going over what, Jade? We are going over the tour. We are trying to figure out how many commands there are and what the commands are. And today was essentially, well, what they call what? Uh, it's Shavuot, Shavuot, the Feast of Weeks. So did we start talking in tongues and everybody heard me? No. no. Okay, no. That didn't work? No. Uh, I don't think so, no. You guys didn't understand anything I, I, I said? No, I think we all speak the same language here. Oh, yeah. Well, that, that's the thing. So we were just going over this, and we are going over some false teachers and false prophets and things of that nature. We won't disclose that here, but um, it is very evident that the New Age has taken over pretty much even the Torah community, where people are talking in tongues and saying this stuff. And, you know, the, the Bible is very clear. It is a known language. It's not a whole bunch of goobly gawk. And everybody out there has said, oh, you, you just haven't done it, Jason. You just have, you, you don't know it unless you got the spirit. And I guess if we don't have the spirit, we do not have the spirit. Um, but that wasn't one of the requirements. You know, you're not, it's, it doesn't say anything about that. And one thing our Messiah never did, when he taught us to pray, he didn't say you need to start speaking goobly gook. And um, there's supposed to be people there to decipher it and all this kind of stuff. And so it is, it's a huge mess. That is not the point of today. The point of today is what, Eli? Uh, going over the command, or today's shovel. It's like... Uh, uh, what was the point of this video? Oh. The point of this video is uh, go today. over the Torah. We're going to find the commands. We're going to be good stewards of the Torah. We are going to uh, basically devote our time into the Torah and find out what the real commands of our Father are. Yes. And so we found some sub-commands last time, and they will not actually apply until we hit um, Exodus 20 because they are some what we call, like I guess, adjectives, some description um, sub-commands inside of that. It's like you get the base command, you get... Do not do this, and then what to do inside of that. What you don't do inside of that. Right. And so here we are right here. We are hitting up into the uh, Sefer, which it doesn't look like it's loaded up right, which I can definitely say uh, thanks, Jade, for setting this up I correctly. Was, I was there. I see that. Okay, now it's going to go. Where are we at, gentlemen? Exodus 18. 18. Okay, here we go. Exodus 18. Now, um, who's Jethro? Uh, it's a Moses' father-in-law. Jethro, or it's a guy on the Beverly Hillbillies. You would have no idea. You're way too young. Okay, here we go. When Yithro, the priest of Midian, El Moshe's father-in-law, heard of all that Yah Elohim had done for Moshe and for Yashrael, his people, and that Yahuwah had brought Yashrael out of Mitzrayim, then Yithro, Moshe's father-in-law, took Zephora, Moshe's woman, after he had sent her back. And her two sons, of which the name of the one was Gershom, for he said, I have been an alien in a strange land. And the name of the other was Elia Izar, for the Elohai of my father said he was my help and delivered me from the sword of Pharaoh. And Yithro, Moshe's father-in-law, came with his sons and, with his, and his woman unto Moshe into the wilderness where he encamped at the Mount of Elohim. And he said unto Moshe, I, your father-in-law, Yithro, am come unto you and your woman and her two sons with her. Now Yithro wasn't just the father-in-law, he was also the jailer. Um, yeah, we read about This is quite Jasher. the interesting relationship we have here because. Uh, yeah, it wasn't Jasher, always his father in law. Jethro, Jith, uh, well, Jethro here, but Jethro. There's no J's in Hebrew. Right, right, but his. How everybody would know him if you opened your Bible, if you don't have a Hebrew a translated Bible, you would see Jethro. And uh, back in the day, if, because he was a Mitchrite, because he was from Egypt, they didn't like the Egyptians where they were from in Midian, so he threw him in prison for 11 years, and then uh, one of Jethro's daughters kept him alive for 11 years, and he married that, that daughter, and that daughter's name was Zipporah. And now I guess he meets him out here, right? He's all good with him after he married him. Everything's cool. You kept me in a jail. It's all right. Shake his hand. Yeah, all is good. Hey, it's all about the women, right? The women took care of him. That's the woman. If the woman keeps you alive in jail for 11 years, that's your woman to, to marry. Okay, yeah. and the, the rain is going to come. We're going to work through this, and uh, I think we're going to try to work through this. It gets a little loud at some point, so we are going to roll through this. Uh, seven. And Moshe went out to meet his father-in-law and did obeisance and kissed him. And they asked each other of their welfare and they came into the tent. And Moshe told his father-in-law all that Yahuwah had done unto Pharaoh and to Mitzrayim for Yashra's sake and all the travail that had come upon them by the way and how Yahuwah delivered them. And Yithra rejoiced for all the goodness which Yahuwah had done to Yashrael, whom he had delivered out of the hand of Mitzrayim. And Yithra said, Blessed be Yahuwah 
who has delivered you out of the hand of Mitzrayim and out of the hand of Pharaoh, who has delivered the people from under the hand of, Mitz of the Mitzrayim. Now I know that Yahuwah is greater than all Elohim, for in the thing wherein they dealt proudly, he was above them. And Yithro, Moshe's father-in-law, took an ascending smoke offering and sacrifices for Elohim. And Aaron came and all the elders of Yashrael to eat bread with Moshe's father-in-law before Elohim. And it came to pass on the morrow that Moshe sat to judge the people. And the people stood by Moshe from the morning until the evening. And when Moshe's father-in-law saw all that he did to the people, he said, What is this thing that you do to the people? Why sit you yourself alone and all the people stand by you from morning until evening? Unto evening. And Moshe said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire of Elohim. When they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one and another. And I do make them know the statutes of Elohim and his Torah. And Moshe's father-in-law said unto him, The thing that you do is not good. You will surely wear away both you and this people that is with you. For this thing is too heavy for you, and you are not able to perform it yourself alone. Hearken now unto my voice. I will give you counsel, and Elohim shall be with you. Be for the people to Elohim ward, that you may bring the causes unto Elohim. And you shall teach them ordinances and Torah, and shall show them the way wherein they must walk, and the work that they must do. Moreover, you shall provide out of all the people able men, such as fear Elohim, men of truth, hating covetousness, and, of, and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties and rulers of ten, tens. And let them judge the people at all seasons. And it shall be that every great matter they shall bring unto you, but every small matter they shall judge. So shall it be easier for yourself, and they shall bear the burden with you. If you shall do this thing, and Elohim commands you so, then you shall be able to endure, and all this people shall also go to their place in peace." So Moshe hearkened to the voice of his father-in-law and did all he had said, all that he had said. And Moshe chose able men out of all Yashrael and made them heads over the people, rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. And they judged the people at all seasons, the hard causes they brought into Moshe, but every small matter they judged themselves. And Moshe let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. All right. So here we are with the rain coming down and we're all looking a little distraught here because I thought we caught this in the middle of a uh, non-rain storm, but the rain is going to happen, but I don't think that is going to matter too much as long as you guys can deal with us and we are super sorry about this. I don't, I, I, it's like this season we almost can't even do this um, because of the rain and so we can't allow that to happen. All right, Exodus 19. In the third month, when the children of Yashrael were gone forth out of the land of Mitzrayim, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim and were to the desert of Sinai and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Yashrael camped before the mount. And Moshe went up unto Elohim, and Yahuwah called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall you say to the house of Yaakov, and tell the children of Yashrael, Ye have seen what I did unto the Mitzrayim, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and guard my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. All right. Any commandment there? I think it goes under the same one we did in the last video, which is, guard my commands, and I will be your people. I would say that's a, kind of a reference verse. Yeah, to guard, the, guard the covenant. So Eli, you need to get that in as a uh, just yet more... Of, of the commandments there. Okay, so let's continue on. We got that one down. Um, what is mine? Five? Is that where is that, Nicole? Okay. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which you shall speak unto the children of Yashrael. And Moshe came and called for the elders of the people and laid their faces all these words and laid before their faces all these words which Yahuwah commanded them, commanded him. And all the people answered together and said, All that Yahuwah has spoken we will do. And Moshe returned the words of the people unto El Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Lo, I come unto you in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. And Moshe told the words of the people un unto El Yahuwah. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and be ready against the third day. For the third day Yahuwah will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And you shall set bounds unto the people round about, saying, 
Take heed to yourself that ye go not up unto the mount, or touch the border of it. Whosoever touches the mount shall be surely put to death. Now, there would be a command, but it wouldn't be to us because we're not around the mountain. Yeah. And, uh, we have to find this mountain. So here, here's a question to you guys, right? And we're talking to the mic when we talk about this. Would you guys be scared if the thundering and lightning and ram's horns came out? Would you be these people that were scared to death and handed back control to Moshe? Uh, I think we probably would have been scared because it was our first time we were hearing thunder and lightning and stuff like that. It wasn't scared. the first time they ever heard thunder and lightning. I guarantee they had thunder and lightning before. But had they ever had thunder and lightning coming from the top of a mountain with a cloud over the top? I, don't know, I think I'd be more interested to hear what he has to say. And then, like, like, hey, I want to hear this too. I don't want you to, one guy here. I want everyone to hear this. Why would they all be fearful? They thought they were going to die. Maybe they're afraid of those for their lives. Yeah. It's power. Like, it might have just overwhelmed them. Yeah, overwhelmed, says Nicole. You probably can't hear her. She's pretty quiet. But it's pretty loud here. Okay. Um, shall be put to death, right? Uh, whoever touches a mount shall surely be put to death. Okay, 13. There shall not a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the shofar sounds long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moshe went down from the mount unto the people and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your women. And I don't even want to go into that, but I mean, basically it says, um, be clean. You don't want to be, you got your clothes washed and you need to be completely clean. Right. And it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders and lightnings and a thick cloud upon the mount and the voice of the shofar exceedingly, exceeding loud. So that all the people that was in the camp trembled. So there you go. That's, this is what you guys think that you would be able to make it through. And Moshe brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with Elohim. And they stood at neither part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because Yahuwah descended upon it in fire and the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the shofar sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moshe spoke and Elohim answered him by a voice. And Yahuwah came down upon Mount Sinai on top of the mount and Yahuwah called Moshe up to the top of the mount. And Moshe went up. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Go down, charge the people, lest they break through unto El Yahuwah to gaze, and many of them perish. And let the priests also, which come near to El Yahuwah, sanctify themselves, lest Yahuwah break forth upon them. And Moshe said unto El Yahuwah, The people cannot come up to Mount Sinai, for you charge us, saying, Set bounds about the mount, and sanctify it. And Yahuwah said unto him, Away! Get you down, and you shall come up, you and Aaron with you. But n let not the priests and the people break through to come up unto El Yahuwah, lest he break forth upon them. So Moshe went down unto the people and spoke unto them. All right. We will do one more chapter because this is probably one of the most important chapters ever out there. There's a lot of commands in this one. There are a lot of commands. Eli, are you ready on this? Yep. Okay. And Elohim spoke at all these words saying, I am Yahuwah Eloheka, which have brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim, out of the house of bondage. Commandment one of this section. You shall have no other Elohim before me. So Eli is going to get going on this, and this is one we will go over next time because this looks like it's commandment 20. You shall not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah Eloheka, am a jealous El, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. More commands. We are going to dial this all in and flesh this out as soon as we are done. Verse 6. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and guard my commandments. You shall not take you shall not take the name of Yahuwah Eloheka in vain, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that takes his name in vain. Remember the set day of the Sabbath, Shabbat, to keep it holy. Six days shall you labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Shabbat of Yahuwah Eloheka. In it you shall not do any work, you, nor your son, nor your daughter, your manservant, nor your maidservant nor your cattle, nor your stranger that is within your gates. For in six days Yahuwah made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. 
Wherefore Yahuwah blessed the day of Shabbat and hallowed it. All right. Even though it's raining here, guys, let's, let's have a quick discussion on this, right? We just went through a whole bunch of commands right here. Probably the one of the most important ones is keeping a Shabbat. Does anyone agree with me? Yeah, yeah. I agree. Why do you agree with me? Uh, it's a rest day. It's a day to recharge the day. Who wants you to rest. He wants you to relax and have a day with him. So I see it as one of the most important commands because if you are willing to take an entire day off and you are willing to keep it, as our creator has said, then the rest of the commandments aren't going to be a lot. Because the hardest thing for people to do is to take the day off, right? It is the day of shopping. is the day that the, the Catholic Church has said, basically, it's not the Sabbath. And they change it. They change it around, uh, I don't even know what time they change it. It's like, I think it was like 300. 325, 325 they had the Creed of Nicaea, which and they... they did a whole bunch of other things, I think, in that Yeah, they, they basically said, Yah and Yahushua and the Holy Spirit were all one, which is, again, a pagan belief. They are all separate, separated. Okay, so let's let's continue on here. Kate, what'd you have? I just want to say that also if you were if you're not going on the Shabbat and right, you're worshiping on a Sunday, you're breaking the last commands he just said, which is do not worship any other god, right? Because he is not dwelling with the people on Sunday. He is not there in a church when you're sitting there praying to a guy named God, right? That's that's a pagan thing. If you're worshiping the sun god on a Sunday and you are breaking the previous commands where he says don't bow down to any other mighty one. And it also says right there in 11 that he blessed that day, right? There's no other day, right? You're not being blessed on a sun day, right? Worshiping Ra and everybody else. And it's also one of like his feasts that he says that you had, that you should celebrate. Like a, every Shabbat is a feast. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so the next big one that I think is, is very, very important, but only for my own personal reasons. <laughs> Honor your father and mother, that your days may be long upon the land which Yahuwah Elohei Kid gives you. Now, gentlemen, my youngsters, tell me why honoring your father and mother it would be a good idea. Well, he says he's going to extend your life. Why is that? Probably what? because you listen to them, you obey them. Like They're like, hey, get out of the road, stop playing in the road, and you don't play the road, you're going to get hit by a car, right? What do your mother and father have that you guys don't? Experience. We Experience. Talk, we talk about our, uh, Proverbs, our Youth for Yah stuff. Okay, yeah, and for those of you who have not seen Youth for Yah, it is every Thursday, 6 o'clock, tune in. Um, the kids are doing their own ministry, and we would love to have you there. There's also a Telegram group for support uh, for the youth and for, for others, but it's, it's mainly for the youth. So yeah, honor your father and mother, and that is that is a huge thing. Um, it all comes down to living a long time. Okay, let's go to the next one. I guess it's important as well. Uh, you shall not kill. Well, any reason why we shouldn't kill? I mean, it's a life. It's a it's a soul. It's a person. Does that mean animals? I don't think so because they they sacrifice animals every day. Yeah, a lot of people say don't kill stuff like that, I and mean, it's probably not good just to kill things for killing. But I mean, if you're, yeah, eating I mean, it, I mean if you're out of the field and kill a cow and leave it on, on the ground, that's probably terrible. You probably you use the mat for meat, yeah. bury it, part of the blood, like, or if they're like you're endangered, right? You the snakes in front of you. It's either you get bit by the snake, you have to kill the snake. You should probably kill the snake. Yes. Okay. Um, you shall not break wedlock. What does that mean, Eli? Uh, don't commit adultery. Don't commit it. And uh, well, there's uh, there's probably other ways to break wedlock. One is committing adultery. One is is basically you know, forsaking Forn fornication. Fornication that is breaking wedlock. Um, you know, letting your family fall away. I mean, you're 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 leaving your family to the wolves. Um, but yeah, you should not commit adultery for sure. Um, you shall not steal. Um, what happens if somebody steals from you? Can you steal it back? Uh, there there's commands further in the Bible where it talks about if you find the person. We're supposed to give it back to you and pay like seven times more of what it was stolen. What if you're completely broke and you're starving to death? Should you steal? Uh, that's why. Also, well, Solomon said in a proverb, he's like, no one, no one turns an eye towards the person who is starving and steals bread for his own starvation. Right? It's not something you should do. You should actually ask before you steal when you're starving. But nobody's if you're starving to death, uh, you like really you go to jail, eat, right? You, you go to jail. used to go to jail in the United States. Now I guess you can steal up to like fifteen hundred dollars worth, and so they have entire. What? Yeah, it's not. It's uh, you can steal up to fifteen hundred dollars in the states. Of anything not, or just food? Uh, they. I've seen like hordes of people run into stores, like entire gangs of them, and steal the store blind. And as long as it's under fifteen hundred, there's nothing you can do. Oh, that's wild. I mean, uh, under uh, like you'd be like fourteen ninety nine. I mean, I mean, if you're just taking a few things of food, it's fine. But if you're taking items and merchandise stuff, I don't think is that's that fine. Not, you should not steal whatever you write. It's always best to ask. Yeah, but, but if you, so, so how, what? If, okay, so you guys. Okay, we're going down a slippery slope here. 
So it says do not steal. Right. Jade, you just said it's okay to steal if you're I hungry. Mean, if you're hungry because we had the edge of the we had the fields that had the corners there, so the widow or someone like that. If you're hungry, you grab the corners of the field. But we don't have that in right. outside of Yisrael. Right. And so what everybody's talking about, what Jade is talking about, is part of the commandments is you're not supposed to like go over your grape field several times. You're not supposed to glean the edges of it. It's supposed to be for the, the orphans, widows, hungry, things of that nature. Out in the real world, I don't think you, you can't. If you're hungry, you should probably ask or pay. Or okay, if nobody gives it. if nobody gives you any kind of food and you're sitting there starving, do we steal? No, Yahuwah will provide. Yahuwah will provide. And back in Israel, there was never supposed to be a starving person. Everyone was supposed to be taken care of. Everyone was supposed to look after their neighbor and feed their neighbor. There was uh, several times in James. James was like if your neighbor comes to you and be like, "Hey, I'm hungry. I'm cold." And he goes, "Okay, you're fine. Have a nice day." And you don't give him anything. He's like it doesn't benefit him at all. Yeah, or, everyone or, was supposed to be fed. Yeah, or you go to you, somebody and ask them for a, a fish, and they give you a stone or give you a snake or something. You know, we, <laughs> there's all sorts of stuff. So no, we should not steal. And the faith of our the faith of Yah is that he will raise food out of the ground. He will make a rock into a loaf of bread. I believe this. I believe it with all my heart that all we have to do is have this entire faith and that he will not allow us to die as of that nature. But that goes into the same part of trying to figure out, especially with you guys, in that event of where we have no food and there's nothing left and people will not give you any food, do you steal or do we pray? We pray. Yeah, who will provide? I don't think stealing is ever an option. I mean, it's the best you can do for it is at least work for that food. Try to try to work for that food. We'd have to go to hunt down iguanas or something if we had nothing. <laughs> but then that's unclean food. So do we die or do we un eat unclean food? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I mean, David ate the show, but right. Yeah, but it's still that's that was cling. Was that was cling food, though. That what food wasn't meant for him. Uh, I'm totally setting up my boys here. I, I don't have answers for a lot of this stuff either. Okay, sixteen. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. What does that mean, gentlemen? Uh, basically, don't say your neighbor did something, and your neighbor could be your brother, anyone close to you, someone you Who know. Is your and any everyone is your neighbor. Everyone around Every you is your neighbor. What did Messiah say? Who is when was, people were coming for his mother? The people that were, he's like, who are my mother and my brothers? The people that are my family, the people doing my commands. His command, the will of the Father, right? All right, so 17. You shall not lust after your neighbor's house. You shall not lust after your neighbor's woman, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is your neighbor's. Mine says do not covet. Okay, do not covet. Yeah, so do not covet, do not lust. It's kind of the same thing. You know, it's it's wanting what they have. Right. Um, you have a cheap lawnmower, your neighbor has a super nice rideable lawnmower. It doesn't mean you should sit there and covet it because coveting leads to st possibly stealing it, doing crime to it. Speak to the microphone, son. Okay. I mean, we all need mics. We all need, like, mics <laughs> being plugged in around the table. We're so broke. We have, like, this broken tablet. It's not even broken anymore, but it's not great. All right, so here we go. Um, and all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the shofar and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. Okay, so this is the, this is back to that question: is where when Elohim comes and uh, you know the, the shofar goes, are you guys going to be running away or are you guys going to be finding courage to do it? Because right here, I think we should learn from our ancestors here that this is not the right thing to do. What is the right thing to do? Listen, I think we should listen because I think they would have had more respect, more fear to follow the commands. Not break them consistently. Well, think about that having our leader as Yah versus Moshe, right? That would have right. been crazy. Yeah, the word direct, awesome. directly from him, and we probably would have respected a little more. Maybe, but these guys, these they, guys I mean, they, they literally end up like a chapter to the end of making idols. All right, I know, I know, I know. So, all right, so here we go. Verse 19 And they said unto Moshe, Speak with us, and we will hear, but not let not Elohim speak with us, lest we die. I mean, it was lightning coming out and striking these people. What was going on? Why were they so afraid? Like, what was this? Just loud like, sounds. Like, this guy had literally just shown them all these plagues, and they never once got touched, right? Like, there was literally death among the camps, and not a single Israelite like, got destroyed, yet they were still faithless to not listen up to y'all. They were just like, oh, we're going to die here. It was probably like a giant storm. Like, yeah. Smoke. But it's the same thing. I mean, until we hear something that shakes us visibly, like a uh, boom, like uh, I'm not even going to go into all the events in the States where all the, the people are unloading hundreds of weapons of rounds, supposedly, and, and um, you know, every, every, you know, nobody hears it. There's like balloons or something like that, right? It's something that scares the living heck out of people. So that's that's what you guys, when it happens next, when when something like that happens, this is where you guys will test your faith. I mean, what happens when a fiery cloud comes down and it, it scares the heck out of you guys? Are you guys going to run for your lives or are you going to listen to Yah? Starts talking and says, I'm Yahuwah. We'll probably, probably be like, okay, what do you have to say to me? Please, little, don't scare me. <laughs> don't burn me. Don't yeah. Burn me. 
A little more gentle, please. A little more gentle, y'all, please. <laughs> we're just, we're, 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 we're very easily spooked we're humans. We're fragile people. Yes, you, you created us. You know our fears. You know everything about us. Maybe a little, little less. Don't scare us. And Moshe said unto the people, Fear not, for Elohim has come to prove you, and that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moshe drew near unto the thick of darkness where Elohim was. So right there, the, the verse before that, it basically says why Yah came down to scare everybody to, to death, basically. literally. Are you faithless, or are you going to stand strong? Yeah, down? are you going to, it says that ye sin not. I mean, okay, this guy came out, thunder, lightnings, clouds, fire, smoke. Uh, this is a scary time. And, you know, you're just people, you have, you know, even if you had a, a spear or something, you're going to be sitting there with your little spear looking up, and you're oh, like, yeah, this, I think I think we had a lot more commands in this chapter if they didn't freak out. I think he would have gone through, like, all of the commands, and maybe I'd tell, told them all the commands. Yeah. Or maybe in parts or, like, days, like, one day I'll tell them all these commands so they can get, uh, process it all. I mean, imagine they, like, they heard y'all, right? They, 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 heard, they sat there and listened to all the way through, and then they went into Yasharel, they wouldn't have had a problem fighting off the giants, right? Because we see later on they get scared of the giants and they have to wander for forty years. But yeah, uh, I think if they were they were so scared of these commands, you would, they wouldn't want to break them. They were so scared of hearing. Well, that's the way they were supposed to do. However, we know because we've read further on that's not what they. I know. Do. I think they literally the commands they did hear they literally <laughs> broke like less than a little few chapters. It could have been a timeline where Yashrael is actually perfect and where everyone's still living in the land. Yeah, not. Okay, and the people stood afar off, and Moshe drew near into the thick darkness where Elohim was. And Yahuwah said unto Moshe, Thus you shall say unto the children of Yashrael, Ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me Elohai of silver, neither shall ye make unto you Elohai of gold. Right there. He comes out, scares the heck out of them, and then he says, Hey, don't make any mighty ones of silver. Don't make any mighty ones of gold. What happens a day later, okay. 40 days later? Yeah, man. I didn't think it was less than 40 days, right? Well, he was, uh, it was, he like, was, up, he was like in the middle of 40 days. Like yeah. He was right at 40 right, days. Right, right. Yep. Okay, 24. An altar of earth you shall make unto me, and shall sacrifice thereon your ascending smoke offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen, in all places where I record my name. I will come unto you, and I will bless you. Okay. Why is our creator a bloodbathing guy? Why? Why... Does he want ascending smoke fires for all times? Why is he? A lot of people say this. Say, hey, you know, your 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 God is your God is crazy, right? He he likes a lot of blood. He's bloodletting all the animals. I mean, we've killed animals before. It's a it's a it's a horrible thing, right? It is it, we've never killed an animal that we're okay with. It was it's always been not okay. It's always been something that we regret and something that we don't like doing and something that unfortunately is necessary to do. How is this that we take these beautiful lambs and take these beautiful oxen and take these beautiful animals that Yah created and we cut their throats? Well, one, there were a lot of Levites that had to eat. There, there were a lot, lot of you. That's a, that, is a very, that is a very good point. But, I mean, so what about Solomon's days? I mean, it became like, the first. Is because, good, because right? back then they had no sacrifices, right? Solomon finally set all the people straight when he was what? still walking and everyone decided they want to sacrifice. Why do we sacrifice? It was for it was, a, it was like a, a, a pardon of sin. It's like you don't sin again, there's your pardon. You're right. right. It was it, like Yeshua every single day, right? They like perfect do, lamb, cut up, cut up, cut up. Did cut up. these people go and repent of their sins and sin no more? <laughs> no, they, I don't I, they know. should have. They should they, have. Yeah, but this is a continual, this is an offer. I mean, it never stops. I mean, this is the Levite's job was to sit there and burn this stuff all the time. All right, I don't have an answer for that either, except it is it is gruesome when you think about it. Um, and that is, is a, a better promise in the newer covenant of having Messiah Yahushua. Unfortunately, it was the son of the Most High that had to be bled out. And Elaine, I have a question. Would that be a commandment? Or that's no longer a commandment, right? Uh, which, which piece? 24. 24, an altar of earth you shall make unto me. And shall sacrifice thereon. So we wouldn't sacrifice. We're not going to. I don't think we should be sacrificing. So it would not H- however, that being said, Cain and Abel Cain had sacrifice. Sacrifice. Ab- uh, Adam had sacrifices. Abraham did sacrifices. But they also walked with Yah, and they also knew how he wanted. They knew the recipes, right? And if you knew, if you read the book of Adam and Eve, Adam like got killed. Hasatan killed him on the altar as well, and so he he there was the blood of man on the altar, which is which is crazy. So. Um, I don't think we. I don't think we should be messing around with strange, strange fire. I just don't think that's in our best interest. We've we've seen that before, and it didn't work out. Plus, um, for now, we do have Messiah Yahushua, and that is my 
thinking on well, that side. That's what I said too. No, because we don't want to sacrifice anymore. But right, Spe speak into it, my my dear wife. And if you will make me an altar of stone, you shall not build it of hewn stone. For if you lift up your tool upon it, you have polluted it. Okay, what does that mean? He he says this later on. But if you if what touches rock. Metal. Uh, yeah. Like, like tools. Metal or something of the sort. Basically, and, it's like pure rock. He doesn't want like rocks have been broken up or hit by metal or something. Yeah. So, I mean, if we, we were we were going to do it in an altar, not to like kill things on, but like an altar, I was going to, or at least I thought about it. Um, but it would have to be picked up stones. You would have to pick up all your stones by hand. You would never, like, if, if metal, for whatever reason, it pollutes it. And so, yeah, you're not supposed to chisel it out. It's supposed to be... Uh, Yaw's stone. It needs to be a perfect stone, no cup stone, don't try to fit it, just put it together. Yeah. All right, 26. Neither shall you go up by steps un unto my altar, thus your nakedness be not discovered thereon. Okay, so us as a family, I think we're going to, this is where we are, this is the end of that one. This is where we will end and we will um, wrap this up for everybody out there. We will add this. It looks like we have a lot of work just like we did on the other ones where we had um, the commandments that we had to put the sub commandments in and so we will get all of this fixed up and so the next time that we all talk which I hope is soon but I don't know that because it is a rainy season here and we try very hard and it's kind of frustrating here for us when we hear the rain pounding down we don't know if you guys can hear us okay um, and we're kind of having to yell and things so these commandments are all going to be filled out everything from 20 to at least 27 or so and we will flesh them out and we have some commandments from the last chapters that we need to add in here and we will put those under the sabbath keeping um regiments and things of that nature and i think that's it i think that's everything for everybody um i know if i ask you guys if there's anything else you'll tell me to read you, the bibles uh, jay do you have anything else yeah these are pretty simple commands to follow nothing was too hard for us to follow here that's not what the christians say son i know that's why i said that Okay, so have you guys, uh, yeah, no, they, that is one thing, that, and I've heard that a zillion times. Oh, you break one, you break them all. That's, that's, that's what true, that's, that's, that's right, that's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible you need says. to repent. Well, that means we shouldn't keep any of them if we can't keep one. No, that's, that, it doesn't mean that, I mean, you should try not to break them. Does that make any sense to anybody? That's like saying, well, I'm allergic to this food, I guess I'll stop eating all food. Um, or uh, I'm not allergic to this food, I'll eat everything, right? Yeah. The, the other way around. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. Um, and, you know, just because, I mean, I guess people aren't real, they don't want to make their creator happy, or they don't want brownie points, as they say. Um, I would rather live in a righteous, holy manner and um, not have to live in a guilt-ridden that the second I die, I'm going to have to plead the blood. And, and, you know, when Matthew 7 says, Yahushua says, everyone's going to come to me in my name. They're going to be casting out demons in my name. They're going to be doing all this stuff in my name. And what's he going to say to them? I never knew you'd depart, depart from me. From me. He's gonna like it's like you're, it's like it's like a guy who's gonna hold a giant party right for all of his people, and he's like he's looking on a list, and he's looking for your name. He's like, oh, awesome! There you are, high five, and you're always like, sorry, you're not allowed. You're gonna go, go, go kick the, rocks. You're gonna go to the sadness center with Hazatan, right? Well, not the sadness center. You're gonna get pelted with fire, and it's like <laughs> you know, the the yeah, yeah, the worms are gonna eat your body. It's, it talks about this in Enoch and different things about how terrible hell is. And the, the difference is all you have to do is live in righteousness. What is righteousness? Righteousness is the walk, following of the Torah. Walk, we don't know anything else other than what the Torah is and what the Torah says. That's the only way we would know what righteousness is. And you have an option. It's like, do you want to live your earthly ways, your disobedient ways now and get punished for it later? Or would you rather live in obedience in a life that is humbled and then go into a life that is full of joy and full of riches in the next world, right? Yeah. Well, and that, that's it. We, this is simply a resume for the world to come. And if this is it, uh, let's just say the man, the man in the sky is fake, right? Like this, all of this is fake. And somebody somewhere wrote this story. The story that they wrote is a story of righteousness. It's a story of holiness. Our creator does not have us doing creepy stuff, right? We're, sp we're not supposed to... Um, nakedness is a big thing, right? We're supposed to stay clothed. Everybody's supposed to stay, um, it, it, there's no badness to it, right? If you look at the doctrines of the saintness and of the evil people out there, it's, it's all bars hold, right? They now have like, um, strip clubs where children are at and they're, you know, Canada is in, in the next year, it's allowing all hard drugs. You can have like 2.5 uh, grams of, of hard drugs and things of this nature. The entire world has gone to do what thou will, 
right? And that is what Satan says. Satan is, is a rebel. And, you know, if you anybody has any drugs they want and, you know, they're, they're locking the people up there, the, the world has just fallen to Hasatan. I see no other way out of this unless a hand of our almighty comes down and saves us. There will not be any flesh left very soon, right? If for all those with eyes to see and ears to hear, the last generation of the pure bloods are gone. And those who understand what I'm saying, you know exactly what that is. And so you cannot intermarry non-pure bloods, right? You're, you're basically corrupting what pure blood you have left. We are created in the image of Elohim, and this world has gone to complete darkness. And we either take the light which is the Torah, which is the word with, the, with the, the, the faith of Messiah Yahushua or by default, like if you don't care and you want to live your life how you want to live, by default, you are going to follow the way of Hasatan. If you are not locked and loaded into the ways of Yah, we're going to drop. All right, that's it, guys. Anyone else have anything? Yeah, keep following the law. And if you're not, it's uh, probably time to start following it. Yeah, it's, it's a good idea, but do they have to follow the law? I would say yeah, if they want to make it, they want to make if it. If they yeah. want to make it, but well, do you have to follow the law? You have a free yeah. choice, right? It's a, yeah, I gave you a free choice, but the, sometimes a free choice isn't always the best choice, right? To choose what you want to do is not the best idea because it will not, it will end you up in a. It's like in two cars, right? You have a yaw car and you have the devil car. One is free will; it costs nothing. You jump in, it goes right off the cliff, and the other one just keeps on going down the straight and narrow path, and that's what we're after. All right, All right guys, much love to everybody out there. Shalom. I think you missed it, Jeffy. Yeah.